Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Inkus, and I'm from Mindjuice Electronics. And today we're going to be checking out. Can you zoom in that one? That is a Mitsubishi FX3U ADT analog card. Where we are going to be having a two videos. In the first video, we're going to have a setup itself, how to add to the PLC and uh, how to wire it and sort of a get how to get the things going for that testing and we're going to be using uh, setting up a fluke uh, process meter to uh, simulate a signal and in the second video we're going to be checking out how to read and understand these analog values inside the plc where to look in the manual and so on so definitely check out the second video that coming up there so uh, all the manuals that i'm going to be using for this uh, specific video definitely for this guy how this how this guy's checked out you definitely need that manual so download that in the description below all the information you're going to need is going to be in there any related videos anything else i think it will be useful to you is going to be there as well so without further ado let's get started <music> Here we go ladies and gentlemen, so the first thing we are going to be doing is adding a card to the PLC and for demonstration purposes we are using the FX3S20MRES-UL uh, PLC which is a 240 volt uh, supply as you can see and uh, you're going to need a couple of things to get yourself started and one of them is a adapter and adapter is sort of this is the part number of the actual adapter so uh, without that one you won't be able to add any cards and it's pretty much looks like that it's like a it's like a little unit like that and it's coming up with them uh, zoom in and but you got the gist you'll see in a minute so you sort of need uh, that uh, uh, these uh, these two parts that comes in the same box and for the demonstration purposes today uh, the card we are going to be testing out is going to be this guy, which is uh, the uh, analog input card for channel FX3U 480-ADP. So it's basically for a uh, current and a voltage, and we're going to be going through later on how that really works. So the first thing we need to do, we need to remove uh, this cover, add this guy into it and in the package you will receive a few screws so we put them in secure it in the place doesn't really take long and then you need to add your a uh, card and this card's got as you can see it's got a uh, uh, two slots and uh, both of them are identical it's just that this slot we will later on we're going to be adding this card back to onto the our training rig so this is for the uh, ds series and this is for the es series because es series is quite a lot higher and ds series is quite a lot lower so uh, that's where you choose which end you want to use so uh, uh, we are at uh, es so we're using this one come on here we go that's pretty much it all you need to do is to add onto it so the next we need to add is uh, this card for that you are going to need to remove the plc a little bit and sort of stick onto it and then uh, close the clips down so the card doesn't go anymore and then add it back onto your uh, uh, din rail so that is, ladies and gentlemen that is a uh, how you add the card to it it's pretty much uh, ready now to uh, be wired here we go so first three wires that i did and that is going to be our power supply each one of fx3u uh, uh, additional cards they're all uh, when it comes down to uh, uh, analog and uh, signal reading will have to have its own power supply so make sure that you add a, a power supply so you can see that plus minus 24 and earth and, and then you can start adding your uh, signals, uh, signal wires. As you can see down there, you got the V1 plus, and then it's a V2 plus, and so on. So basically, go all the way to uh, V4. Those numbers are actually indicating what channel you are going to be using. 
And for the voltage, uh, for the first channel, we're gonna be talking about just the first, first channel. Now, uh, for the first channel, you're gonna be, for the voltage read, you're gonna be using a, a V plus and COM1. So obviously plus and a minus. And if you want to read the, the current, uh, you will need to, to join a V and an I together. So uh, those two signals will need to uh, be added together to be uh, for the PLC to uh, for the card to understand that it is 4 to 20 milliamps is reading and, uh, and there's obviously more you need to do inside the PLC to switch between a uh, current and volts and that's something we're going to be looking at uh, in our next video so for the testings today we are going to be using a uh, simulation we're going to be using this meter in here oh right so a little bit this meter in here, which is a, uh, a Fluke 789 protest meter. And this guy be able to, as you can see in here, in the bottom, he's got a, a simulator on it. And we're pretty much going to make this guy in here to be our sensor, pretty much. So I'll read out as actually using the sensor. And for that, because we're going to be doing a 4 to 20 milliamps, uh, we are uh, we are going to be using the current uh, current uh, reading on the let me uh, uh, put the wires in and I will talk you through how that's working here we go so the three wires are in that we are going to be using for our signaling so let me run you through how we are going to be processing uh, this uh, signal so uh, this is the uh, fluke diagram how to do uh, the simulate so we're basically going to be taking 24 volt supply sending in to the simulate part of uh, the uh, actual meter which is going to be r plus and then it's going to go through and then it's going to start basically managing the signal and basically outputting exactly what it needs to output uh, to the reader which is reader in here our analog card and obviously analog card will only require some form of a comp which is as you can see from the power supply that will be our negative uh, signal so let me show you how that is done in here as you can see these two guys in here as so you can see v1 and vi1 are joined together and they are joined up to our a uh, black area probe so that goes back to the meter i'm going to show you that on a meter in a minute and obviously we are uh, sourcing our a plus a signal which comes from uh, the from the dc power supply and it goes to our red, which already has, uh, ooh, has it been in that same way it's been done for the, uh, from the drawing. And also we have uh, in here, as you can see, the comb. Our comb is coming from a minus part of the power supply as well. And this is more or less what it looks like in the meter. And as the system is not powered up, as you can see, I'm getting a no a reading whatsoever. So, uh, because it, the whole system needs to go live for anything to start working. So, uh, let's power up the first, uh, as you can see, if I power up the card, so this part, this, this MCB in here is powering just, uh, just, uh, just the power supply, because remember, this is our 230 volt supply in there, so that's different. So, as you can see, the card comes on it's independently, and so it's sort of working independently with its own power supply, and by doing the PLC, so you can see my computer already went on so uh, that is uh, pretty much the PLC comes on and now the readings can start happen as you can see the meter in here and now it says a 4 milliamp output so and that is a range of 0% so and by, by changing around yeah later on in the video and not, not later on the video in the next video we're going to be looking at how these values are represented inside the, the PLC itself so that ladies and gentlemen is is how we uh, get this uh, part of the uh, simulation going so uh, just to uh, emphasize one more time I'm not sure I mentioned already that the FX3S uh, PLC can only have uh, one uh, card unfortunately but an FX3G can have a two cards and FX3U can have a four card. So do make sure you select the correct PLC, whatever, how many as analog signals you, or whatever other cards. There's a lot of other cards that we're going to be using for. There's a lot of cards we're going to be adding uh, to the system and testing them and see how they work and how to program them 
as well so definitely uh, stick around for those and uh, i think that would uh, more or less cover of obviously from there on you have uh, three more channels left and uh the, the those obviously you pretty much understand how you understand the first channel how to do you understand the rest of them so uh that will end this menu for this video will do we know how to wire the thing up and we know how to uh, connect things up in the next video we're going to look at into how to as uh, a uh, program in the, how to read these values inside the plc and how to understand the manual what is a what and i'll go talk you through because i thought this is, is another matter of subject and it takes quite a bit of time so i thought uh, two uh, part video would be a uh, needed so ladies and gentlemen if i hope that you can understand understood what we're doing in here and how to get your analog card going if you can get yourself a process meter definitely do that it's a great way to test in your analog cards in case things are not working not just testing analog cards you can actually a uh, test as well your uh, uh, whatever the sensors you are using so it's a, it's, a, it's a great tool to have. So uh, on that, ladies and gentlemen, if you like that video, please smash that like. If you don't, smash the dislike. So, uh, but uh, comment in below what you like, what you don't like. When I want to ask any questions, if you can, I'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next video.